What's up guys, Irish Turtle here, and welcome back to How To Hibana. So, I basically did a How To video on Echo just about a week ago, and I'm finally getting around to doing Hibana's video. I do want to apologise about this being a bit later, I was waiting on a new microphone to come, uh, I've had some issues with that, so instead of getting this video out with a new microphone, I just thought I'd get the video out for you guys, as it's been long enough, and I actually now know the character quite well. So, first of all, let's take a quick look at her loadout. Now, she has the primary of a Type 89 Assault Rifle and the Supernova Shotgun. Both weapons very, very good. Uh, personally, I use the Assault Rifle, but the Supernova is just as good, if not better, obviously, in close-range scenarios. Attachment-wise, as always, whatever you want in the weapon. I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty of what you should put on it and what you shouldn't. It's completely down to your own personal opinion. Now, we have the secondary weapons. Very much the same as Echo, you have the P229 handgun, and the Bearing 9 submachine gun. Now, personally, I picked the Bearing 9. Again, I just like having a submachine gun as a secondary weapon. I think it's very good for swapping to and being able to put out a lot of like bullets down range. And as a whole, it's just a better secondary weapon, in my opinion. The P229 does do more damage, but, you know, it's a trade-off, and again, it's pretty much whatever you want. Uh, then we have her gadget. She has a stun grenade and a claymore. Now, this... Uh, I've always said, you know, pick your own gadgets, whatever you want. And realistically, I would say you're better off with a stun grenade with his character. My reasoning for that is a lot of people tend to pick claymores anyway. And if you put a stun grenade on, with her ability, once you've opened up a wall, having stun grenades to throw in behind it is very useful. But obviously, that's just my opinion. You are free to change that up as you see fit. Now we're going to take a quick look at her headgear. She has the default, which is just standard there. You have the Red Crow, which is this sort of strange, sort of digital camo style thing. Not too keen on it, doesn't really make a difference. And then you have the Slicer, which is the Season Pass headgear. And to be honest, not too keen on that either. I prefer just the stock, um, as you come with. Then we have the uniforms. Now, uniforms, uh, as we all know, are quite new. She has the default, which is the standard blue. You have the SAT airborne attire, which is black, which is what I stick her with. And then you have the paratrooper, which, again, is a little bit too unsustentatious for me. So I go with the uh, season pass airborne attire. But, you know, as I've said literally throughout most of this, everything is your opinion. So I'm going to have a brief look through the details. This is just my gameplay statistics. don't know what I'm doing. So, now we're just going to have a quick look through the bio. Now, obviously, I'm not going to read this to you. Just pause the video if you're interested and read it yourself. Or hop on and check it yourself. You can do it now. Um, <laughs> right, so now we're going to drop into some gameplay. Uh, where I'm going to teach you guys just the basics of her uh, gadget. How I think it's best used. Where it's best used. And then I'll show you some gameplay just after that. To put it all into a little bit of context. So, let's hop over into that. Okay, so let's take a look at Hibana in a controlled setting. Just here on Consulate. Now her special ability is the X Kairos uh, Launcher. Now essentially what this does is it fires six pellets that you can deploy on a reinforced or non-reinforced wall or barricade door or window and then you hit the launch button, uh, you hit the ability button again once they're placed and the charges will detonate. Now what's interesting about these charges is they're essentially like a thermite charge but in a smaller more concentrated area. Basically what this means is if I place them slightly lower on a wall, say just here, as you can see, they all place and they line up. And then if I hit the detonate button, as I said, they take a little bit of time to burn, similarly to a thermite charge, and then they will blow a hole in that exact location. Now what's cool about that is if that's a reinforced wall, you can obviously just crawl through it if you've opened it. If you choose to be a little bit more tactical, you could obviously open it slightly further up on the wall, so I could do it like there or there pretty much anywhere here and create myself a kill hole. Now what's cool about this as well is obviously you could stack these so that bigger operators could either crouch through or get through at their own whim. So it's definitely a, a unique gadget to be adding in. It adds a little bit more versatility to the game. You can open up kill holes that either aren't as large as uh, thermites or you can open up ones that offer different style kill holes. So if I'd just done the second level here you could have had a blackbeard come up and use a reinforced wall, if you can imagine it, as cover to shoot through into an objective room. Now, because she has such a useful versatility, she's actually a really overpowered attacking operator when you look at how you can use her. Another cool thing you can do is you can take out trap doors. Now, if I was to fire at this trap door and detonate the charge, even if it was reinforced, it would only take one set of charges to take off that trap door. 
basically what this means is, if say you're on a map like Conchulet here, if you were to place one on this trapdoor, one on that trapdoor, and then one on the bathroom trapdoor, you could detonate all three simultaneously and actually breach into the uh, breach the roof, like basically at a lot of locations for fewer charges. Which again is a nice little touch. It's an awesome style of thing. Other things to note with this device are you can actually choose the style of hole that you open up into an objective room. So, for example, we'll take this wooden wall just here and we'll fire the charges. As you can see, we have six charges on the wall. Now, the enemy can actually shoot these off if they see them. So, let's say I want to shoot off that one, that one, that one, and that one. I've now only got two charges left. So, the enemy essentially could remove the charges or you could pick and choose the style of hole, as I said. So, I can still detonate the two charges that are left, they still go off, except they will leave much smaller holes for me to shoot through. So again, if you were to stack a black beard with this and have just this section here, he could peek into an objective room and shoot the enemies with a lot more cover presented instead of having to blow out an entire chunk. So it's quite an interesting new breaching tool. Uh, I imagine it's going to be used a lot by the attacking sides. Uh, she's definitely somebody who you could complement with... Uh, Blackbeard, as I've said, you will benefit from playing Thatcher or Twitch alongside her, similarly to as you would with Thermite. The reason for this is obviously because the charges are placed and then you have to detonate them afterwards, uh, a mute a mute charge or a bandit jammer a uh, bandit jammer? A <laughs> mute jammer or a bandit charge can um, disable your devices. Now essentially, you know, you have to view it like I said as a bit of a cross between Ash and Thermite. You have the utility to launch from a distance like Ash does, but you have to detonate like Thermite, which means the charges can be taken off. So it's an interesting new mix of two of the more played operators, and I imagine we're going to see a lot more of Hibana in gameplay. There is one other brief thing to note before we hop into some gameplay, and that is the red square that you can see on screen now. Now this red square is visible by everybody. It's not just your team, it's not just you, it's everybody. So that includes the enemy as well. So if I was to stand in this doorway and aim at this wall here, if an enemy was in this room they would be able to see that targeting and know that I was out there with a device that can't injure them. So it's one of those things where you have to make sure you're aware of your surroundings before you launch off the device and you have to try and make sure you stay alive long enough to detonate them uh, if you're trying to set up more than one breach at once. So it's definitely a cool new operator to use. Operator to use. I'm really liking playing her in casual and ranked gameplay. So uh, let's just hop into some gameplay that I've recorded. All of this is on casual because you know I didn't want any kind of pressure of learning a new operator uh, for you guys while playing ranked. So hopefully you won't take too much of that. But let's hop into some gameplay and I'll talk you through some tactics while playing her. Okay, so in this first clip I kind of want to show you guys how best to use Hibana. So as you can see here, there's some bandit traps on the reinforced wall. Uh, I'm kind of just hanging off, waiting for them to be taken off. And then I put one at the bottom of the wall. And basically the reason for this is I want to open up a kill hole that is more beneficial to the team than it is to the enemy. So the idea here is if I open it there and there's an enemy, I can sort of see through, I can locate the enemy, and then I can shoot through at them. Now, as you'll notice here, when I find the second one, I try and make sure those red lines are as close to the first hole as possible. Now the reason for this is because a lot of people make the mistake of putting them slightly too high and then not being able to open a door that they can get through. So you want to make sure if you're trying to get through a hole, you can make sure the two are placed together closely or place one at ground level so you know you can crawl through it. Because this is an example of how you play Hibana quite well, you know you can open up holes you can get through quite quickly. And now I want to show you an example of bad Hibana play. So here we are on Chalet, uh, I'm playing with a friend who's really low and essentially we can hear Hibana launching her device and we think okay so she's either going to come from that door or she's going to try and flank round. Uh, she's only got a couple of seconds left so you know we're watching the doors where she could come from and um, basically you're about to see why you need to be careful with the placement. So this Hibana player had made the huge mistake of not being careful with her placement as you can see there. He actually made three holes that he couldn't get through because of his daft placement. What you want to be making sure you do is spread the placements out but make sure they're close enough that you can open up a hole that you can still get through. Otherwise you get situations like this where you open up three kill holes that you can't actually get through which doesn't actually give you the benefit of still being able to breach into the room. So she's a good operator but it's worth remembering 
don't make this mistake. You do not want to make three separate kill holes that you cannot access a room through because you'll end up with situations like this where you can't get into the objective and you actually end up losing the round. So as a whole, whenever you're playing with Havana, you obviously want to make sure that you're playing with teammates and you're working quite well. So as you can see here, I've picked a Thatcher. I've got my friend to sort of place his uh, device, the, uh, device down. And we were just talking about, you know, where we need the device placed. Um, another cool thing about this clip actually showcases the difference in size between a standard breach of Havana and a standard Thermite breach. So that's quite useful as well. But essentially the idea is you want to be playing Habana like you would Thermite. In a lot of situations, you know, you need him back... You need her backed up like you would Thatcher, uh, Thatcher, like you would Thermite with Thatcher or with a Twitch. Somebody who can take out the reinforcements, um, defensive mechanisms like the Mute Jammer and the Bandit Trap. All times, like, that is the kind of person you need with you. Because if you come up against one of those walls that you can't breach through, you essentially become a useless operator and a wasted pick. So... As a whole, it's always worth roaming around the same as you would with Thermite. Uh, make sure you have Thatcher, make sure you have Twitch, because they work well together as a injured. pair. Obviously, you know, Almost if you only minute. pick one, you're going to make the mistake of like not getting the full use out of the Operator if the enemy one team have set up against you. And again here, it's a similar situation. I've sort of come up uh, against a reinforced wall. I see the enemy are there. I can hear a guy reinforcing. Don't quite get the kill. But the point is... I've sort of gone to a location where they haven't reinforced so I can still breach even without the teammates helping me with a useful operator. So essentially it means you know you need to open up these kill holes where you can see into the objective where the enemy aren't quite ready for you so you can get kills like that where you just pop them in the head and clear out the room. And essentially this is the sort of style of play you want to be going for. You want to be making sure whenever you're playing her you're opening up walls. And again, I make sure it's close, close to the top one, so that I can still get through there even after it breaches. So those are the sort of main things you need to be looking out for, because otherwise you can really fuck up play with her. And here's an example of another operator she pairs really well with, and that is obviously Ash. Because of the remote breaches that both of you have, if there's a reinforced door and then a reinforced wall, you can couple each other's abilities together so that you can actually look into a room and get nice kills from a bit more of a distance. So there you saw she took off the reinforced door, then I took out the reinforced wall, and we had a better view into the objective room. Obviously then the Ash player did then just run straight in, which was a little bit daft, but the point was it allowed this synergy of different operators to work. As I said, she works well similarly to how you play with Thermite, except you've got that extra range to play about with, which is something you definitely need to remember because a lot of players seem to forget that. I've noticed Havana players recently playing where they play a lot like Thermite. They'll breach a wall uh, with a device and they'll just stand next to it as it's, as it's detonating. And it's like, you don't need to do that. You can fire from range and then plant. So, you know, it's worth remembering that she's this, like a ranged version of Thermite. A lot of people seem to forget that for some reason. And you can utilize her similarly like Ash. So she's definitely a good all-round operator as a whole. But otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little how-to Hibana video. If you did, obviously, a like is always appreciated as it helps the channel out, helps this video get more exposure to be seen. Also, if you feel like sharing it with your friends who maybe don't understand how to play Hibana very well and you feel like they could do with a little bit of help, feel free to share it with them. Subscribe for more Rainbow Six Siege content coming soon, and I'll see you in the next one.